If we go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, that's, that's where the, the breakdown is. I'm going to go through a lot of scripture today, but, <clears throat> and unfortunately, I have a lot, so I'm not going to be able to wait for all of us to go through to all pages and stuff. I'm just going to go through all the scripture, <clears throat> but that's where the main scripture is going to be. It says, um, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So what is the context of, um, of Ephesians chapter 6 and the whole book of Ephesians? You know, it's talking about that we need to be ready for the circumstances that we live in. <clears throat> and what world do we live in? The enemy territory. Um, between earth and the kingdom of God lies the kingdom of darkness. And the one in con not in control, but the one that uses it to his advantage is the enemy, and that is, or one of the enemies, and that is the devil, Satan. And he uses everything he can. In Romans 12, verse 9, it says that the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray, he was hurled down to earth along with one-third of the angels in heaven he took with him. And that's one of our aim. And that is one of our enemies. He hates that you now love God, and he uses the world and all it contains to his advantage. The media, uh, you know, so social media, movies, uh, that's one of the biggest things now because it's never been like that before. It's never been like this in all of history. It's at its worst. Um, and another one of our enemies is our own flesh. Uh, it talks about in Galatians 5.17, the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. So <clears throat> in Romans 5.19, it says, for as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Yeah, it talks about that in, in Adam. Yeah, Adam's disobedience, we were all made sinners. And uh, it says, as it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, 10. Yeah, we, we are all full of sin. Uh, folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. Proverbs 22, 15. We, we are all just full of sin and, yeah, and, um, and we need to, we need to let the Holy Spirit lead us. So what are the acts of the flesh? The, the acts of the flesh are sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, division, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And that is also in Galatians chapter 5. And that is what the flesh desires. So that is the context of the book and why we need, or the context of 
uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and why we need the armor. So uh, I also wanted to speak about what each piece of armor isn't, and that isn't, it isn't just clothing. It's not just um, pieces of clothing that we can just ask God to put on and put off, take off every single morning or every single night. It's um, what it is, what each piece represents is um, the fruit and good works that come from our faith. It says in James chapter two, verse 18, now someone will say you have faith, but I have deeds, show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. So the first, the first um, piece of armor, and none of these, I also wanted to say that none of these pieces of armor is more important than the other. They all are balanced, they all help each other, they all correlate with each other in some way, shape, or form. So the belt of truth. Um, so in the Greek, truth, is um aletheia and that that means um the truth respecting god and the execution of his purposes through christ so it's not as much context as it is commitment like uh like the spirit or or the sword of the spirit because that's that one is talking about the word of god itself the belt of truth is talking about our commitment and um, our commitment and our sincerity in our relationship with him. So tying up our loose ends, um, how serious we are in our relationship with Christ. When we say yes, yes means yes or no means no. Not just being lukewarm, it's being serious in our relationship with him. <clears throat> like an example, when you signed to join in the military, I know Doyle was in the army, I believe. You, you are in the army or the military 24 seven. It's not just one moment you're in it and then another moment you're not. You're in it until your contract ends. You're, that's, that's an exact example. You've made your decision to love the Lord. You should. You're 24 seven. You've given your life to Him. That's that's it right there. <clears throat> so we now need to do the same. We need to give Him our all. If we're going to love Christ. It needs to be sincere. We need to commit. In Hebrews, it says, um, "Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, it means the world's watching." Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> so, yeah. In verse, sorry. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, it says that we should be like in a race, in a, therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. So that after I've been, so after I've preached to others, I will not be disqualified. We should be taking this seriously. It's not just, yeah, not, not just something to be fooling around with. So what does this commitment produce? Um, unity and fellowship in our relationships with each other. An example is um, in Ephesians 5, in the same book, verse 31 and 32, it says, a man and a woman, Christ and the church. Oh, those are the examples. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined together with his wife and the two are united, there you go, unity, united into one. 
This is a great mystery, but is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So husbands, you know, when you said I do to your wife and you were sincere about that, there was unity and there was fellowship with you too. When I, an example with me, when I decide to be serious about beginning to humble myself and obey my mom, I know that there's fellowship between her and I, much more fellowship. And then in my relationship with Christ, when I'm beginning to love my mom more, I know that there's much more fellowship and unity with him and I as well. <clears throat> so let's go on to the next piece. The breastplate of righteousness what righteousness is Paul talking about? What are we required to do in order for us to retain righteousness? There's a lot of things, but I believe one of the main things we need to do is repent. Everybody's required to repent if we need to gain, in order to gain righteousness. Uh, there's in Romans 8, 1, it talks about, therefore, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That is righteousness that we are blessed with. There, with when, uh, so if we stumble, I'm sure you all you, most of you men know this, that there's this righteousness that God blesses us with. Then he views us as pure and holy, even when we stumble and block or stumble and and trip and make a mistake because we're not perfect. But there's also a righteousness that God calls us to. He, he calls us to um, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. We're called to work and, and to do what he wants us to do, to, to live, to live like him, to, to become more and more like him. <clears throat> we are called daily to confess our sins to God and each other. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, that's... That's first John 1 9. So, and when we're living in a state of unconfession, we're deceiving our we're deceiving ourselves and we're continuing to live in in unrighteousness. Yeah, and if we are going out there in the battlefield, deceiving ourselves, thinking that, oh, I'm fine, when we haven't repented of certain things, then more vulnerable and the enemy can easily get a, hand, uh, a hold of us in some way, shape or form, making, you know, dragging us away further and further from Christ. <clears throat> it says in um, 2 Corinthians 7, 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Um, in the Greek, cleanse, kada, katharezo, means to free from defilement of sin and fault, to free from guilt of sin. And that takes humility. It takes humility to ask for, for, uh, for repentance, to confess our sins, to ask for forgiveness. There you go. So, and what does this repentance result in? Righteousness, holiness, purity. It talks about, it talks about uh, godly sorrow in Romans 8, 11. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation. So this repentance, this constant repentance leads to salvation, leads to purity and holiness yeah 
So these are questions to ask yourself in a way to examine yourself. Do you feel conviction for your sin? And um, are you going to God for repentance when you do stumble in some way, shape, or form? Are you asking for repentance or for forgiveness when you tell your wife something you shouldn't or anybody, any relationship that you're in? <clears throat> so a uh, little... So the belt of truth is our sincerity and our um, our seriousness and commitment in our relationship with Him. Our righteousness is um sorry, and the belt, uh, the breastplate of righteousness is our um, constant repentance. That that produces righteousness. Um, the next piece is uh our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That's in verse 14 and 15, the beginning of it. What it's not talking about is evangelism. People relate that that verse, that piece of armor to, um, to Romans, Romans 10, verses 11 through 15. That says, um, I'm going to go ahead and read that. If you guys want to go along to it. It says, as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they, and how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. That, those feet, that, that's just speaking of how, how blessed and how beautiful are those, the feet of the people that speak about the good news. That's not talking about standing firm that's not talking about any pieces of armor that's not talking about defending ourselves in the battlefield it's it's talking about evangel that that right there is talking about um evangelism um but ephesians chapter 6 verse 14 is talking about the gospel of peace it's specifically saying the you the our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace so what should we look at what is the gospel of peace it's the good news that you have made peace with Christ that is how we are to stand firm it's, it's how we stand firm knowing that we now have made peace with christ it's the the peace in our hearts that god has blessed us with the opportunity with salvation and that we will one day be with him it says uh, in romans three twenty three, the at the end of it the free gift of God is eternal life. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read the whole thing. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Hmm. Yeah, God is on our side. He is our strength. And that's why we should be able to stand firm. That's why we should be able to stand firm and stand tall against the enemy. Because if you don't have the right shoes on, if you don't know that truth, you're you're easily going to trip all the time. Shoes are the most important thing. And if you're outside all the time, you're going to, if you're outside all the time, barefoot, you're going to, you're going to stumble if, you know, you're, you're, you're going to trip, you're going to stand on, you're going to step on a rock. As soon as you step on a rock without shoes on, what happens? you get the worst pain 
and it, it's just horrible. So what shall we do to keep this strength, not worry or doubt? Remember that truth and stand firm. The next piece of armor is um, the shield of faith. The shield of faith. That says uh, in verse 16, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So Roman, Roman soldiers back in uh, this era, back in this time, <clears throat> had uh, shields that would cover their whole body, not just small shields like you've seen in certain movies, but would cover their whole body and they would stand behind it. And... Um, and this is the kind of shield that um, Paul was probably speaking of. Um, Satan is going to throw whatever is, is going to attract you the most, throw at you whatever is going to attract you the most, these flaming arrows. It says in 1 John 2.16, you know, it describes... The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life in 1 John 2.16. It describes all over Galatians uh, what uh, the acts of the flesh are. Sexual immorality, debauchery, drunkenness. If there's any part of your life where you still have a desire for that, of course we do. Our flesh desires that. But if you give it a foothold of any any kind, you're gonna you're gonna fall into it. It says in James 1, 14 through 15, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own their own evil desire and enticed. It gives birth to sin. And when it says when they are dragged away, that means that when they are not standing firm, when they're not <clears throat> standing behind that shield and not taking a peek at what the flaming arrows are when they're not looking at God's truth and remembering what it says and peak or you know focusing on God's promises what we are to do about this is be loyal and faithful to God Faithfulness is the most important thing. One of the most important things. It's continuous loyalty. If you love me, keep my commandments, is John 14, 15. Jesus knows the vast amount of um, temptation that we go through with him being here on earth. The three decades he was here, 30, around 30 years he was here. And he doesn't put anything that we're not able to go through. Doesn't doesn't allow us to go through anything that we can't go through. So how do we do this? Stand firm. How do we how do we um, not fall into those temptations and make sure to be faithful to the promises that God um, blesses us with? It says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We put our hope and confidence in what he promises us. In Matthew chapter 3, sorry, Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is being tempted by the devil. And instead of instead of falling into his temptations, instead of saying, hey, God isn't giving you this when, when you should be given this, he says, I'm not going to fall into that. He focuses on scripture automatically and focuses on God's promises. <clears throat> and what is the results for our faith? As men, 
as women, the results for our faith is respect. Um, I didn't write down the, I didn't write down what scripture it was, but it's there's a scripture in the Bible. It says that these were all, they were all commended for their faith. And the word commended is, um, it means they were all respected and and looked up to. Yeah, I apologize for that. So the next piece of armor is Hebrews 11. It's the same. It was the same verse. Yeah. They were all commended for their faith. Um, the next piece of armor is the helmet of salvation. You know, speaking about confidence and hope. The helmet of salvation. Verse 17 of uh, Ephesians 6 says, Take the helmet of salvation, the first part. It's not something that we can take on and off. Salvation. It's not a piece of clothing like I had spoken of before. <clears throat> Paul speaks in 1 Thessalonians 5.8. Um, First Thessalonians five eight. He says, "But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet." Salvation. In, in the Greek, sore, sore terra, so, sotarea, there you go, means um, a few different things. Deliverance from my sin comes from God's righteousness. Salvation in the present possession and future salvation saved from the presence of sin. Uh, glorification. So... The helmet of salvation is putting our confidence in in just the salvation that we have itself, that we've been saved from sin, the, the fact that I've been blessed with righteousness and that when I do sin, God's righteousness frees me from condemnation, that I'm being blessed and that I'm becoming more and more like Christ I'm being saved that explanation right there and that one day I will be free from sin that I'm going to be just like Christ in the future put it in so the helmet of salvation is putting our confidence in the redemption of our bodies that living hope in first Peter 1 3 it says in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power. So that right there, something that can never that can never be taken away from us. You gotta have hope in that. You gotta have Trust in that. You gotta remember that daily. In Second Peter one five, in one chapter five, <clears throat> three eleven. Mm -hmm. it says um. For this very reason. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, it will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not 
have them is nearsighted and blinding, blinded, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. So if, if this is something that you forget, if this is something that you don't trust God, if you think that if you, when you stumble, you are not saved anymore, then you're vulnerable in this battlefield and the devil can get a hold of you in, in any way, shape or form with anything. This is something that, this is a truth. When, when the Lord has blessed us with salvation, we've been saved and he's making us more and more like Christ every day. That is firm, firm truth. And he now sees us as pure and holy. There it is again, Romans 3.23, for the free gift of God is eternal life. Uh, John 3.16 is another one of those. Um, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's, there's there, and there's so many of these. <clears throat> so what does this hope and confidence produce? Uh, the godly man that he has called you to be. You're becoming more and more holy and Christ-like when you uh, have this living hope in you. And the next and the last, um, the last uh, piece of armor is the sword of the spirit. And that itself is the word of God. The word of God, <laughs> it says it right there in scripture it says um let's take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and the word of god um it says in john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so that's that's an amazing truth to to know and that um when we know the word and we have him with us it's just great <clears throat> but one of the enemy's best tactics is um knowing scripture himself memorizing it and using it to his own advantage um, and even using others to know scripture themselves. So what, what should we do about that? What is our best defense? And that is for us to know scripture. But what does the word know really mean? Does it mean to just know scripture the way that you see people that don't live the word know scripture? that just recite it for themselves and use it for their own advantage. No, it's much different. The word no in the, in the Greek, yada, it's, um, it means some of the definitions are to know by experience, to recognize, admit, acknowledge, confess. Um, in, in Genesis chapter four, you see Adam and Eve after they've uh, fallen, after they fell. It says, Adam, in one version, it says, Adam made love to his wife. In another version, it says, Adam knew his wife. There, there's intimacy in those things. So other than just read scripture daily, meditate on it, <clears throat> we need to live it out and put it to practice daily and this is after what it says on second corinthians chapter 3 16 and sorry after second timothy 3 16 and 17 it says um all scripture is god breathed and useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of god may be thoroughly equipped so we need to let it teach us, rebuke us, correct us, and train us for this righteousness, and then do and practice what it's 
teaching us and put it to practice. That is knowing God. That is someone that knows God. That is a person that correctly handles the sword of the Spirit. Somebody that just recites scripture but doesn't put it to practice is not someone that is thoroughly equipped for uh, when the enemy attacks them. If without even knowing it, they're on the enemy's side. <clears throat> so how should we use the Word of God? Uh, well, I've made it pretty clear. I've made it pretty clear. Um, not for our own advantage, but um, in context and in lines and in line with what Scripture says. It says in Matthew chapter 6, do not practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. And in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, it says, <clears throat> it's a verse I should memorize. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, you are the light of the world. Sorry, 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And then 16. In the same way, yet let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So we are called to shine before others, but if it's to glorify God, not glorify ourselves. To handle the truth, to glorify God. And then when it comes to in context, if we're going to be sharing scripture, it needs to, we need to make sure that it's in context. A lot of people share scripture, like the one I've seen mostly, is like um, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You see, I've seen it on basketball shoes. I can do all things. I've been shared in a Bible, it's been shared to me in a Bible study before, how a basketball player has been brought up with that scripture, I can do all things. So he, and that's the verse that he lived on to, to get up to where he is. But that's not, it's not about being able to do all things for your own, for your own good, for your own glory. It's the context of it is being capable um, of living according to his will, regardless of the circumstances, whether you have a little bit or have a lot, Regardless of the circumstances, you are joyful and are able to live according to his will. And he's given you that strength. Yeah. What else is it for? How else should we use the word of God? Um, to reveal the truth against lies, but in a loving manner. Uh, again, when Jesus was being tempted by the devil, <clears throat> he... It says, he, he uh, the devil went and used scripture against him. He said, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is, it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands. And that's Psalms 19, 11 and 12. And Jesus, Jesus answered him without yelling at him, without arguing with him. All he said was, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Yeah. In Ephesians 4.15, rather speaking the truth and love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. <sighs> and that, that is, um, will we, that right there too, Ephesians 4.15, we are to grow up in every way into him that and that requires us to put on the armor of god living with the armor of god on putting on christ and doing the things that the armor of christ requires us to do yeah. well guys i uh i'm gonna go ahead and summarize the the belt of truth is our commitment and sincerity in our relationship with Christ. The breastplate of righteousness is the righteousness that comes from our repentance. 
the feet fitted from the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace is um, the ability to stand firm from the good news that you have made peace with Christ. Our shield of faith is our faithfulness during temptation, our continuous loyalty. Our helmet of salvation is our hope and confidence in the salvation that we've been blessed with. And uh, the sword of the spirit is truly knowing the the word of God. Yeah. Okay, guys. I'm gonna... <sighs> Thank you, guys. I took note of something you said when you were speaking on the breastplate of righteousness. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I liked how you said... Uh, that without repentance, we are vulnerable. And that's uh, kind of enlightens the fact that we need to examine what it is we're doing wrong so we can then ask for that forgiveness. We can then go to God and say, this is what I'm doing. This is what I need help with. So it's, I like that you said that, that we are vulnerable without repentance. I thought that was, that was pretty key right there. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he is faithful and just. When we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and the cleanses of all unrighteousness. So if he if he forgives us and cleanses us of all unrighteousness, then that makes us righteous, right? Mm -hmm. And it sounds really easy because we could just, you know, like you're saying, a continual repentance. But the truth is that many people don't do this. You know, I was reading Psalms 36 the other day. And I know Lauren sent it out to the guys, and I think it was Psalms 36, verse um, verse 2, well, verse 1 and 2 say, talking about the wicked, it says, Sin whispers to the wicked deep within their hearts. They have no fear of God at all. Verse 2, in their blind conceit, they cannot see how wicked they really are. So if, if, if they cannot see how wicked they are, are they really confessing their sins? And so it made me think of the parable that Jesus said about was the parable the story that he said about the tax collector and the pharisee you know the pharisee looks over to the tax collector and says you know i'm sure glad i'm not like that guy and this is a guy in church so is he could he, he's walking around with his own little breastplate you know thinking that he because i like the fact that you said it's not clothing well he over here puts on his little you know his religious little clothes on and walks around with his breastplate of righteousness but yet he can even acknowledge that he himself has sinned and he's looking over to the tax collector and talking about how sinful that guy is. And the tax collector, on the other hand, can't even lift up his head to the Lord and literally puts on Christ. And Jesus says that that guy is justified because that guy is confessing his sin and Jesus is, and God is cleansing him of all unrighteousness. So it's one thing to put on this little breastplate and think we're walking around in righteousness. Another thing is to confess our sins to the Lord because he's the one that makes us righteous. So that, that was really good. And it, right there in the same book, 1 John 1, 8, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. <clears throat> we're just lying to ourselves and just living a lie. I think for us all to remember is where are we at in our in our walk right now? We've been justified, but we're in a period of sanctification. So I looked at John 17, <clears throat> where Jesus was praying. And I'm going to pick it up just at 18 there. In John chapter 17, verse 18. As you, you sent me into the world. He's speaking to the disciples now. I also have sent them, meaning the disciples, into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. Now look at the next verse. I do not ask on behalf of these only, but for those also who believe in me, that's us, through their word, that they may all be one, 
even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us. Then if you could just go back to John 14, because Jesus was speaking to the disciples before he was going to depart this earth. And he said, do not let your heart be troubled. And remember who he's speaking to, speaking to the disciples. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And it goes on. But think about it, brothers. We're in the world and we're going through a sanctification process. And we have the armor to put on each day because we are in a battle. We're in a battle between the flesh and the spirit. And we need to examine ourselves. We need to repent. But we not, we are sanctified by Jesus who has done it all for us. Now we just have to walk in faith. Because isn't that our justification? Not by works. Your, our works are important, but we're justified by our faith alone in Jesus Christ. So where is our focus every single day? We're sanctified in the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And I didn't get to the scripture but thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we have quite a challenge, every single one of us. So it's a beautiful walk, but it's a very narrow walk because he said, narrow is the way, but broad is the way. Choose your path out there carefully, brothers. Don't get entangled into worldly affairs. It's, it's, it's not an easy walk. No, but it's a walk by faith because we're not, we're not doing it in our strength, but we do have the strength to overcome certain situations in our own life. Mm -hmm. So we do, we're, we're being freed from that power of sin and we're underneath the power of Christ. But it is a struggle. We, every single one of us struggle every single day. But remember, Jesus did it all for us. We just have to be faithful and walk by faith and follow him and let the Holy Spirit change us. I tried to change myself for many years. And uh, if you try to change yourself, well, you can, you, can, you can lose weight, you can gain muscles, you can get a lot of knowledge. You can do a lot of things to increase whatever it is, but where do you put your confidence in? Do you put your confidence in your own knowledge? No, I don't. I put my confidence in what Jesus has done. That's my confidence. My confidence, my belief, my trust. But know this, we're going through sanctification. He's taking, you go through your trials. You grow through your trials. You grow closer. Trials are a tremendous thing to go through. <laughs> They're hard, but you count them all joy. So there's so much to this, but we st sure need that armor. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Doyle. As you guys were uh, talking there, Doyle and Brett and everybody, this, this section right here in Ephesians 6, um, Petra wrote a really good song some of you guys might remember it more power to you and in that song uh they the lyrics say more um or it says in the bridge it says so be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on all his armor and fight the good fight in all of our weakness he becomes so strong he gives us the power and the strength to carry on and it's just a, it's a, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that song, more power to you when you're standing on his word, when you're trusting with your whole heart in the message you have heard. Yeah. Anyways, it's, it's really cool. It goes along well with this, but I like uh, verse 10, you know, uh, we put on the, all that armor of God, um, 
but we do so in the power of God's might, his mighty power, the Holy Spirit. We rise up in the Holy Spirit. We put on every piece of armor and we take our stand. And uh, like Doyle was referring to John 17, John 17, 15, Jesus says, I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. And the Lord, he's given us uh, the tools we need, right? His Holy Spirit that's within us and upon us and all these, uh, all the armor, keeping our mind and our heart in the right place, standing against the devil, standing against our own flesh. And uh, yeah, it's just always a good reminder that we're in a, we're in a battle and we need to be vigilant. We need to be did, diligent, put on that armor. But yeah, you know, if you never listen to that song, you guys uh, look up more power to you by Petra. <laughs> You know, another, another thing in, the, in verse 1, 2, it says, be strong in the Lord. <clears throat> you know, it's implying that we are not strong enough. So that we depending on the Lord's power. So like Doyle was saying, don't try to do things on your own. Um, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all these things. You know, we're always trying to do things on our own. We can do all things, um, but be strong in the Lord. I like that. You know, I like I like that. It's kind of um, it's kind of the unspoken thing. I can do all things um, through Christ. When I when I'm in Him, right. I can keep the right perspective. Like you say, we we uh, we skip ahead so far. We like all of a sudden I can do all things, and then like we just end it. We we forget. Yeah, uh, that's just the. I love how he. He, he says, finally, finally, my brothers, yeah, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And if you're strong in him and in his might, then you put all this stuff on. You know, don't race ahead and just be like, oh, I can just put on, I got, I got this. I got this on my own. Got my helmet then, on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got my helmet on. I'm ready. Then you get me done. You're like, hey, what's happening? You know, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have to. Uh, firstly, we have to be strong in the Lord. Is we need to strong in His grace. Again, let me see in Second Timothy chapter two in verse one. Apostle Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy. Let me read one Second Timothy chapter two verse one. If we see. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. First, we have to strong in his grace and put we have to put on the armor of God. That's what you see in verse eleven again. You may be able to stand again the words of the devil. To stand to able to stand again the wise of devil. We have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then after we have to put, we see first, we will see number one, the bed of the truth, the blood of righteousness and feet of shoot with the preparing of the gospel of people, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and then the sword of the spirit. You will see the sword of the spirit in verse 16, also verse 17. The sword of the spirit, which is the God. How much important God word as the Lord command to Moses and at Moses it was in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 meditate God word day and night and then let me read one Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt med meditate year in day and night and thou may also have to do according to all that which is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. To be success and to be strong in the Lord, we have to meditate God's word so that we may be able to stand. Thank you. And then verse 18, after we're 
you know, when we're strong, standing strong in the Lord's power and in his might, and we put on all the armor, we need to be praying always with all prayer, all supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and all supplication for all the saints. So we need to be in a continual state of prayer while we're standing in our armor with the, you know, the sword of the spirit in our hands, in our hearts, in our minds. And we need to be praying, um, you know, and praying for all the saints and ourselves as well. And that's why you look at all the model prayers. It's, it's in the plural. It's our father who is in heaven, you know, give us this day, our daily bread, lead us not into temptation It's plural. So all prayers made for all the saints lifting up, you know, the worldwide body of Christ as we stand in that armor, that's, uh, you know, uh, the weapons of our warfare, um, you know, are mighty in God. They're not carnal, but they're mighty in God to pull down strongholds. And so we get on our knees and pull down strongholds in the spirit in prayer. <clears throat> yeah. I like the way this um, verse just calls us to be intentional with the tools that God's given us to stay um, on a righteous path. And it's just, uh, you know, the whole years ago, uh, the, the Roman <clears throat> soldiers, they basically were wearing like a dress. It was, you know, whatever you call it. But when they went into battle, they would gird their loins. <laughs> and what that would mean is they take that dress from a, in between their legs, wrap it around their manly parts up into that belt to protect themselves. And, you know, as a metaphor, you know, us men, we need to, as we go through the world, uh, protect ourselves from letting that do the thinking for us, you know, keep our manly parts and, you know, from letting th those parts do the thinking for us and just the, the breastplate, you know, don't be emotional. Your, your breastplate guards your heart. And when your emotions take over your, uh, your thought process and all these are just little tools <clears throat> that he uses a metaphor to, if you go through them every morning, and say, before I leave the house, I'm going to gird my loins. I'm going to, you know, not let my heart, my emotions tell me which way to go, but let the word of God tell me what to go. Uh, the helmet of salvation, you know, keep your head in the game. And just their work is very good, you know, metaphors to kind of work as bullet points as you walk out the door. I'm going to stay in the game today. I'm going to... Um, Use the tools that God's given me, and the most important, God's word. You know, stay in the word um, and, you know, trust in his word as we're going through our day. Right, that was very good. Um, I got a couple of scriptures here. Um, you know, the helmet of salvation, um, you know, it's the most precious gift that we have ever received. And we have to know that that's our sure hope in, in our salvation. Uh, in John 17, 20, you know, we have to know who we are in Christ. That's, I think that's the biggest thing here, knowing who we are in Christ, knowing what the word says, standing on his promises. You know, if we stand on his promises, we won't get caught up into this worldly uh, desires and stuff that the world tells us we are, and we won't fall into those things. But when we stay on, on the word and know what he says we are, it's, it's when we stand strong. Uh, John 17, 23 says, I in them and you and me, that I may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and I have loved them as you have loved me. And then John um, 15, 4 through 5, you know, that's a great one there too, you know. Um, abide in me and I in you as uh, the branches cannot bear fruit of its own self unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me you know so we have to be connected you're, you're absolutely right and then um, John 4 1 John 4 4 
says, you are, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So we have to know our creator. We have to know where our strength comes from. Exactly, you're exa exactly right there. But we also have to know who we are. We have a purpose and a destination, and we have to live by that. We have to stay strong in the Lord, stay in the Word, just like you said. Um, and you know, yeah, we're gonna, you know, those things will come. But if we don't, if we don't uh, fall prey to it, you know, we will be strong. We, we, you know, uh, he nothing can touch us when when we are in His Word. You know, when we're obedient to him, Psalms 91 says, when you are obedient to me, that he protects those and he keeps those close to him, those that are obedient to me and are in my word. So I believe that, that if we are obedient to him and we're staying, you know, uh, you know, in him, then yeah, we're one. He lives in us. So that's one thing we got to know. He in us, he lives in us. So he's with us all, always. Yeah, I really like um, the sort of the spirit and how, you know, Brother Thang brought up uh, Moses. And Moses commanded that we meditate on the word of God day and night. Uh, King David says that the word of God is a lamp to his feet, right? And Jesus himself said that we should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the, from the mouth of God. Um, Brett said that, you know, he read first, I mean, he read John chapter one that said that Jesus is the word. And it's one thing to get up in the morning and say, you know, I know there's a dude that goes on, on I don't even know what, he's, he's all over social media and all this stuff, and he's making a, a, a mockery of, of, the, of, of the full armor of God, and he's putting on this thing, and he's putting music in the background, and he's putting on the helmet, and he's putting on the shield, and all these things, and everybody walks around like they're, like, like, like they're putting on clothes, you know? But the sad truth is, you know, that Lifeway did a survey among Protestant Christians and, and said that only 32% of all Christians read the Bible on a weekly basis. So that's three out of 10 Christians. Only three of them actually read the Bible. But my concerning part is that those, those seven that don't read the Bible, I wonder if they put on this sword, you know, wake up in the morning and say, I put on the sword of the spirit and they would, and they go to work. And don't actually even read God's word. We're fortunate enough, even LifeWay said that 87% of all Americans own a Bible. So we're fortunate enough to have Bibles. We have Bibles on our phones. We have Bibles all over the place. We have God's word available to us. And yet, only 3 out of 10 Christians read the Bible daily. So how is it that we have the sword of the Spirit when we don't even know his word? And, and so Peter told us to sanctify the Lord God in our hearts and that we should always be ready to give a defense if anyone asks for the reason of the hope that is within us with meekness and fear we should be ready titus paul told titus that older men should be sound in faith well how can we be sound in faith if we don't read his word if we don't meditate on his word so it's so important to read god's word and know god's word and i just say that i'm putting the, the, the clothing on without living a life that way you know it, it's a lifestyle you know putting on the, the the shoes of peace it's a lifestyle jesus said that blessed are the peacemakers right it's not just saying that i that i, that I put on peace without being peacemakers it's not saying that i put on a shield of faith without not having faith. it is impossible to please god without faith so we have to have faith in god we can say we have faith but if our actions tell otherwise, then we don't have faith. And I like the way um, you guys talked about salvation, the helmet of salvation. And if we're going around questioning our salvation, do we really have the helmet of salvation? And breastplate of righteousness, you know, if we're not confessing our sins and, and we're not repenting, do we really have righteousness? So uh, that's just my caution to all of us to, to, to not just say that we're putting on this armor, but to actually live the way you know, that to live a life of an armor, that we have it on, and, and this is a lifestyle that, that we have. 
again, we don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that comes from the word, from the mouth of God, and that's our lifestyle. You know, Jesus is the truth, and nothing can sway us from the truth. You know, so, so we put on the belt of truth because Jesus is the truth, and the truth tells me that marriage is man and female. Nothing else is, if I accept anything else, I'm compromising. I don't have the belt of truth if I accept anything else. So it's, um, it's a lifestyle. When you said that uh, only 32% of Christians actually read the Bible weekly, and we know that the sword of the spirit is the Bible, right? What are people using to fight wickedness with if they're not using the Bible? They're using more wickedness to fight wickedness. And if we're not using scripture as our defense, as, as our tool to fight off this wickedness, then we're choosing something else instead. It's, it's, not, it's not a judgment thing. It's not a condemnation thing. You know, the word of God says you that are spiritually sound need to correct those that, that don't know. So, I mean, it's even, it's even on us too. I mean, that's why we're here. We're sharing with one another. We, we, the reason why we gather together is to encourage each other in love and good works. So that's why we gather, which is an awesome thing that we're doing. But so when we talk about this, it's not about that we're judging or condemning. We're just concerned. It's a, it's a concerning thing, you know. So it, it, our heart breaks for those that, that, aren't, that aren't getting it. You know, it's, um, so we have to, it says you that are spiritually sound need to, need to correct those that, that are, don't get it. Yeah. I'll just leave you a scripture, just like Jesus left the description, uh, scripture for the apostles before he left. He <laughs> says, I will not leave you as orphans as I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me because I live, you will live also. Think about that, brothers. We have life today because Jesus was resurrected. Amen. So our hope is in Jesus, not in ourselves. But yes, we are asked and commanded to go out and to share our faith, but to share it in love and not to go out there and condemn. It's so easy for me to go out there and just point my finger. But remember, when I'm pointing the finger, I have four fingers pointing right back at me. And Jesus, he gave a beautiful in the Beatitudes. Remember that speck that is in our own eye? It's a log. Why remove a speck out of your brother's eye when you have a log, a log in your own eye? So we have a beautiful walk when we walk by the Spirit. I love you, brothers. Dear Lord, thank you for gathering us men here uh, in your council. We listen to your words spoken through Brother Brett. His guidance is given to us from you, your words spoken through his lips. I pray that we accept these commands that we prepare our ourselves for this, this spiritual warfare, not of, uh, not of anything else but the, the warfare of the flesh. It's a spiritual battle. And if we prepare with the, the breastplate, the helmet, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, spirit and the feet of, and the, and the, and the feet, um, dear Lord, that we will be able to fight in all things with, with your understanding, Lord, that we'll be prepared. I pray that for the men that were not here today, they will be walking with you and that we will go and continue serving in your name. Amen. Amen.